and these gals and boys are about the oh the three week point or so. This is about the time where your kids will want to name them and cuddle with them and stuff like that. So if you're raising them for food, keep that in mind. <laughs> As they are awful cute at this stage. Uh, the both the father and the mother were a uh, were black colored bunnies. So uh, this is actually kind of a small litter. There's only four in here. The scale usually chokes out pretty good litters of uh, usually about six to eight. <clears throat> uh, you can see they're still a little skittish and stuff. Loud noises. <laughs> Loud noises will uh, will kind of set them off a little bit. But this is about the uh, about the three week point. At this point, you're pretty much in the clear. Uh, they have all their fur. Their eyes are open, good, and stuff like that. They will start getting into the feeder here before too long and eating some of mom's mom's feed instead of just relying on mama's milk for uh, for their food. So usually, if you're going to lose a litter, you'll lose it before this point. Um, these these uh, little guys are just about to the point of where they can be somewhat self-sufficient on their own. Okay, then these rabbits are a wee bit older than that. Uh, usually, when you check on them, I, I don't usually mess with them till till about a week or so. Uh, what you do want to do after they're born is you want to start kind of paying attention to you know as things moving in there, um, things like that. Because what'll happen is. You'll, you'll, you'll probably, especially early on with, with young does and such, you'll have a few uh, kits, a few babies that die, and you don't want to leave them in there with the rest of them, okay? Especially in warmer weather, you'll get flies around there, and, you know, I mean, who, who wants to lay in a bed with, you know, five of your brothers and sisters and two of them are dead anyway, you know? So she could, she could go in and she could reject a whole lot of them then, different things like that. So what I usually do is I'll reach down under the cages where all the, you know, little yum yum rabbit berries fall. And as gross as it sounds, I take a little of that, a little of dirt from right around the cages, and I'll kind of wipe it together like that in my hands. You see my hands look a little dirty, and, and now, of course, they have a little bit of a rabbit smell on them versus soap or if I petted, you know, petted the dogs, things like that, okay, or goats or chickens or whatever else. So what you what I usually do when they're really young is I just kind of feel around in here by them, and you can tell really easy. Okay, a good well-fed kit is going to have a little chubby tummy. Oops. Okay, this one is, is probably pushing two weeks now because he's, he's just starting to open her eyes. Her or him, too hard to tell at this point. So we'll just keep it simple. Call her her. Okay, cute little black bun in here. Um, they, you saw they have like some really minor fur in that last batch we showed, which is just a little younger than this. And now these guys are getting a decent fur now. Um, when they're about to this stage, the only the only losses you'll have is if she stops feeding them all together. Uh, but you can what you check is you you just kind of rake your fingers there on them, and you can kind of feel okay. Got a little chubby tummy there, got some fur, and you can see she's alert. She's kind of looking around like, hey, where am I at? What's going on? All right, get you back in there, little one. And they will cuddle with their you know brothers and sisters or whatever there. That's good. That's what they need to be doing to keep warm. Um, if it's really cold, make sure that they have some of the uh, the hay and fur mix up under them as well too. You know these metal cages can get really cold, even if it's only say 40 degrees or something like that. And uh, it's very common for there to be a nice, really well-made nest with a lot of uh, fur and a lot of grass, and there'll be dead bunnies at the bottom because they've kind of scooted around. Or when she goes in to feed them, <clears throat> she scoots the hay and grass around in that. And the baby bunnies actually lay on the cold metal there, and it freezes them just as quick as you know if you and I laid out on cold pavement all night with you know with nothing under us and that. So I just kind of rake my fingers in there when they're just you know maybe like two days old and such. And uh, what I'm looking for is it should elicit a little movement from them, <clears throat> okay? And I should feel you know a little chubby tummy there and that, okay? If uh, I don't usually take them out. You know, you have you have people say, you know, oh well, should you, if she's not feeding them, should you take them out? And, you know, give them cat's milk or give them, you know, whatever else. No, 
uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, I tried early on to feed them with the syringe, uh, you know, obviously minus the needle, <laughs> things like that. But uh, you're going to have a heck of a time raising, a, uh, you know, a bunny that's smaller than these by yourself. It's it's pretty much impossible. So I'm sure people have done it, and you know, if you want to post about that, that's great. Uh, but in general, it's not worth the effort, um, especially if you're running, you know, six or ten does, you know, and you're really doing this for food instead of for just, you know, backyard little, you know, show and tell for the kids or whatever. <clears throat> but so you have to expect some losses, is I guess what I'm saying. Uh, you know, you might have she originally had a litter of what seven or eight, seven or eight, and she's got five in there now. So, you know, the, again, this is, we, we just cleared out some of our older does. We're down to just one of our original um, or does from the last couple of years. Every two years, good idea just to kind of clear the herd and go from there. Um, but that's the progression. As you can see a little bit, we showed some older ones. But we're we're going to piece all this together. Um, kind of difficult to do it all at one setting because you always have rabbits at different, uh, different intervals in that. And thanks for watching the Survival Report on video here on YouTube. And also, feel free to check out our, our new online survival message board at www.survivalandpreparedness.com. Again, www.survivalandpreparedness.com. Come by, check it out, discuss the videos, and learn to meet other like-minded people. Thank you.